The coronavirus pandemic is posing an unprecedented challenge for humanity. Since the arrival of the virus in Turkey in early March, Ankara has taken tough measures to prevent the spread of the disease. The Turkish government, along with a consortium of four local companies, has undertaken an initiative to domestically produce ventilators, which are a critical part of the treatment process for patients infected with COVID-19. We sit down to talk with Sajuk Bayraktar, Chief Technical Officer of Baikar, and Cemal Erdogan, General Manager of Biosys, about their role in this endeavor. Mr. Sajuk Bayraktar, Baikar's Chief Technical Officer, and Mr. Cemal Erdogan, General Manager of Biosys, uh, thank you for setting aside time for us uh, during these very trying times for Turkey as the coronavirus pandemic has impacted not only Turkey, but also many countries throughout the globe. And we're seeing many changes uh, to our normal way of life as people are now being isolated. We're seeing lockdowns, people using masks on a day-to-day -day basis. So I want to thank you for setting aside time uh, during this very trying period. Uh, Mr. Bayraktar, my first question is to you. Uh, when you think of the name Sajuk Bayraktar in Turkey, the first thing that comes to mind is drones a pioneer of Turkey's drone program, a very important centerpiece of uh, the Baikar company, uh, whether it be the TB2 or whether it be the upcoming Akunja drone, very important achievements. But right now we're here to talk about ventilators, a ventilator that your company is part of a consortium in producing. Now, can you take me through the process how Baikar went from producing drones to being part of a consortium that's producing ventilators. So uh, thank you for uh, visiting us and for the interview. Uh, when the pandemic started in the world, uh, a lot of countries, uh, as you know, the disease causes uh, uh, pneumonia. Uh, and a lot of the countries in the world in urgently needed, needed ICU ventilators. And people were dying because of that. Uh, lucky, luckily, Turkey has a lot of uh, inter intensive care units and ventilators compared to most of the world. Uh, but, uh, but again, uh, when the pandemic came to Turkey, when the virus reached Turkey at the beginning of, uh, at the month of March, uh, we said, you know, we need to do something about this uh, because uh, the disease might spread uh, more quickly um, uh, or it can do more harm maybe. So there was uncertainty there. And a lot of the countries uh, were suffering uh, because they didn't have medical ventilators, especially ICU type ventilators. And this, uh, so uh, we have a very advanced uh, technical uh, background. I mean, we have uh, engineering. We have engineering disciplines. Seven different engineering disciplines working together uh, on uh, high-tech drones. Uh, so, as a humanitarian mission and as as a uh, as a citizenship mission, we, we we since we're engineers, we said we need to do something about this. So, with the help of the uh, Ministry of Technology and Interest Industry, uh, we found that uh, there was a company, startup company, which was already working uh, on ICU ventilators in Turkey, and we, which had came a long way in the last five years. Uh, they, had, uh, they, they had been able to produce 12 ventilators, which were already in use in hospitals in Turkey. So we said uh, we, the world needs ventilators ur urgently. Turkey might need them urgently. What can we do? Uh, we have a very, uh, as I said, you know, uh, technically, we have a depth in a lot of different engineering disciplines. Uh, so uh, since there is a, a company that already does them, but uh, the need for is extremely fast uh, mass production plus if the device since these are complicated devices I mean they're called mechanical ventilators but they're not really mechanical they're computer controlled devices and 
the, the, what's, if you want, uh, if someone asks me what's a, a medical ventilator, it's really a computer program that's, you know, uh, controlling a set of complicated actions, you know, valves and monitoring uh, and doing respiratory functions, complicated respiratory functions. But that's, that's what it requires right now. We're looking at this period, this very troubling period for the world, and everyone needs to help everyone. Now, I'm looking at this consortium. I see a Sasan, a, a defense giant. I see Archidic, a white goods manufacturer, publicly traded uh, with exports to Europe, Asia. I see Baikar, a company that now has become a household name uh, with the developments in Syria and in the region with its drones uh, getting much publicity. And then I see Biosys, a name I've never heard before, a startup company. Tell me a little about Biosys and how did it become part of this consortium? Um, actually, we started this project nine years ago with uh, the uh, Ministry of Science and Technology. And they granted us a foundation to uh, found a company uh, to um, develop this uh, mechanical ventilator device. Then we uh, we have advanced to um, develop and validate our products in f uh, four years ago, and we 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 went into market for three years. Then uh, our devices are um, in use in uh, in. Uh, private hospitals in Turkey. When this pandemic starts, then um, Mr. Bayraktar and uh, Mr. Fatih Kajir uh, uh, leads uh, this um, consortium, and suddenly we were uh, found ourselves in this consortium with, with our uh, know-how. What is Biosys's role exactly in the consortium? What does it provide? Uh, with these other three big companies, what type of uh, responsibilities does it have? Um, there are three giants, as you say, uh, but uh, in, in, in another path, uh, uh, there is no any um, sophisticated, uh, these respiratory systems are very sophisticated field. Then uh, Baikar is um, doing very well in, in aircraft uh, field. Uh, Aselsan uh, does um, very good jobs in uh, defense industry, and Archelik is uh, is a giant in um, manufacturing, uh, mass manufacturing. But uh, there is no um, sophisticated um, know how about um, respiratory systems. Then we 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 get into this project with our uh, respiratory systems um, know how. So that's why uh, we are here now. Uh, because we have uh, very um, talented um, engineers and um, medical ICU uh, intensive care units doctors in our team. So that's why we are here now. Baikar is a defense company at its core. So you walk into the office one day, behind you, programmers, engineers, and you tell them, guys, no more drones, we're going to produce ventilators. What's the reaction of the employees and how close is the technology, the engineering between drones and ventilators, was it hard to make that switch? Well, uh, we make robotic aircraft. Uh, these are ro basically robots, human controlled robots. Uh, there are differences in technology, uh, but uh, uh, again, it's just like uh, if you were to compare the technology in medical ventilators versus drones. Uh, we have, you know, we have robotic systems. We have systems of comp complex systems interacting with each other inside the aircraft, which are all, which are all computers. There's like 40 different computers in Bayraktar TV2. In Akinci, there's more. There's like 60 different computers basically uh, flying the aircraft. And those are all, uh, you know, interconnected with a computer computers on the ground, which are human controlled. So here you have a system uh, which is only one computer, uh, but it controls a uh, you know, complex set of uh, uh, valves and you know, monitors certain parameters of the patients and the uh, respiratory system and 
it, it again does control computer based control basically and humans you know control the machine certain parameters you know the nurses and the doctors so uh, if, if I were to compare this uh, technology to a drones computer in a sense it's different and uh, but it's not like anything we didn't do before I mean we do much more complicated interactions between different computers and design these computers and design the aerodynamics but here of course it's a different field I mean the medical side in the first place is a different field it's a human respiratory system you know there's aerodynamics involved that's different aerodynamics you know uh, there is uh, mechanical uh, you know pneumatic systems involved but they're different but again the fundamentals are the same but since BIOSIS uh, has already developed a device and the time is critical here. We need to adapt the technology extremely fast to verify it in the first place and uh, to, uh, to put in place if there were you know, certain developments necessary. For example, this uh, disease required a special treatment uh, method that required a mode change in the devices. Jamal Bey was working on it, actually. So those were all verified, the circuits, the electronics were all verified and redesigned together with Aselsan. And the software was, uh, you know, verified line by line. And some of, it, some of its parts were uh, rewritten. Uh, some of the documentation that was, uh, that was not there uh, was uh, also, you know, taken in hand by our engineers. But the approach of our engineers to the problem was everyone wanted to be, and that's again true for the rest of the consortium everyone wanted to be a part of this team because they saw it uh, as a um, you know humanitarian uh, mission and everyone had a heart in this so at one point uh, you know engineers from our team were working on a, a on a valve that was that was you know export restricted due to due to the fact that it was being used in a ventilator. We, so we had to uh, produce those to redesign and produce those. So they were working on it. Uh, and again, what makes the problem here challenging is a time issue. You know, you need to uh, spend, you know, countless hours on problems and that you don't know when you're going to solve. It's like writing a poem, but you have a deadline and the deadline is very short you know uh, you need to design something real fast uh, but design is uh, inspiration you don't know when the inspiration is gonna happen, but there's a deadline you need to meet that so they said lock us into the room you know uh, some of the engineers are friends uh, lock us into the room and don't let us get out till we finish this job so that was the attitude and uh, everyone we, we are like 850 people a salesman is way bigger than that. There are like seven, th 8,000. I'm not sure about the number, but uh, as Bicarb, we were like 40 people working on this project. Uh, the rest of the engineers all wanted to be a part of this project because uh, the reason is, I think, uh, simple. It's uh, our civilization's uh, values come from, you know, compassion. Uh, Mr. Bayrak, I was talking about how challenging the time constraint is now. Uh, the Turkish pre President Recep Tayyip Erdogan said he's expecting delivery of 5,000 units by the end of May. That's a very tight deadline. Uh, can this consortium meet that deadline? This, this project is involved with three giants and a startup company, then I believe that we can handle with this uh, big number because uh, everyone is um, crafted with their uh, with their pets then uh, we, we believe we can handle with this big number and furthermore we can do uh, much more than this then we can I think I believe our health ministry and our president will um, uh, support uh, the, uh, the developing countries then uh, we can do much more than Mr. Bayrak there now again drones to ventilators is the medical sector, the health field, something that interests uh, Baikar in the future? Can this be a new direction, a new branch for the company? 
four years back, we were working on a device uh, that was a mobile ECG device, you know, electrocardiogram device. There was uh, there was none in the world. Uh, my father uh, suffers hypertension, so he needs to monitor it. He carries a, a you know, tension, uh, blood pressure uh, device on his arm all the time. He needs to check regularly, maybe like 50 times a day, his blood pressure. So uh, we said, uh, we came with that, you know, the biomedical devices are, are a leading tech sector in the world right now, you know, wearable bio, uh, biomedical devices. We started on a project, uh, worked on it for almost three years uh, to make a mobile uh, wearable device. Again, there was a consortium. Uh, one, one was a banking company and one was a university. We, we, work together on that project, a wearable device that, that was, actually there was none like it at the time. Uh, that could basically monitor your, uh, you know, your movement, your motion, plus of course uh, it's a mobile ECG with uh, diagnostic level accuracy. It could monitor it and broadcast that data uh, to the, uh, you know, to your doctor or a health system, healthcare system. Uh, it was highly developed technology. There was challenges there too. But uh, then our partners uh, continued on their own on that project. Uh, so th th this, is not, this is not the first time uh, that we were working on a medical, medical project. Uh, but uh, for the future, uh, you know, the foundation of Bicar, Bicar was a, a, a company that manufactured automobile parts. It's an old company, it's a family business. Uh, my father uh, founded it in eight, 1985. It's almost uh, 40 years, right? Almost there, it's like 35 years. So uh, uh, my, our love for aviation, my love for aviation kind of drove uh, the company in this direction. This project has also gotten a lot of publicity for the company as well. It's making its name heard. Have uh, Biosys received any offers, foreign companies, uh, or opportunities outside of Turkey's borders as well? Actually, we, we received a lot of um, demand uh, from outside, uh, from foreign com companies. Uh, we, we want In foreign to countries? A lot of foreign yeah, a lot of, interest. A lot. Of a lot. From all over the world, there's yeah, a very huge demand, um, and we 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 reply them kindly to take their demand and inform our uh, health ministry of health, and so there are a lot of demand. Um, you said that these ventilators are medium to high range. Uh, can you see your ventilators one day in hospitals in New York, Shanghai, London? Yeah, I hope so, because we, we have a good team and a good consortium here, so we can advance um, shortly um, uh, that segment. Now, President Erdogan, during this period, uh, he's helped many other countries, up to 40 countries Turkey has sent humanitarian aid, medical aid to, and uh, the recent reports say that over 100 countries have applied to Turkey for aid as well. Uh, is this consortium that Bicar is a part of just manufacturing these 5,000 units that are going to be delivered for Turkey? Or is there plans inside the government or inside the consortium to also produce more for other countries as well and help uh, people throughout the world that may need ventilators? Because from what I've seen following the coronavirus, a ventilator is a very key aspect of the uh, health process in keeping patients alive, especially during that period where they're intubated when it's a life or death scenario. So will we see these ventilators throughout the world? Will they be part of these health packages that Turkey's sending uh, to many of these other countries? Well, uh, of course that the decision is for the government to make, uh, but uh, as far as we see, Turkey, uh, in terms of ICU beds, you know, intensive care unit beds, and uh, in terms of 
fighting with the disease has been extremely successful and uh, we we have the per cap you know per uh, we have the one of the highest number of uh, per million uh, people uh, number of ICU beds plus ven ventilators and uh, as far as we've learned uh, many of those uh, so we have excess in terms of uh, medical devices and IC units. Turkey has a really, very strong health care system. You know, what, uh, example for the world, I think, you know, I've lived abroad, it's, uh, you know, for many years, and I've s I haven't seen such a social, you know, strong uh, health care system elsewhere. So Turkey has set a good example in social health care and, uh, and again, I think that lies, uh, the reason again lies at the foundation of our civilization, you know, uh, mercy and, you know, compassion for the humankind. There was countries all over the world. I cannot, you know, I, I don't want to name them, but nevertheless, all over the world, Western developed countries, you know, all around the world, there was a, since we started the campaign, uh, there was, they, they, so many orders coming from uh, all around the world. So this is a high end, I mean, this is a very sophisticated ventilator, you know, more modern, more advanced than most of the ones that are already being used. So uh, they could be used anywhere in the world from the most advanced developed countries to poorer parts of the world. And I think, and at a very, uh, the, since the, uh, this was done on a humanitarian, uh, all humanitarian basis. I think the p price could be, <laughs> you know, uh, probably much more affordable than uh, even the rest of the world. Okay. Running, we're running out of time, so one last question, quick answers from both of you. You mentioned the doctors, the healthcare professionals are heroes. Is Bicar, is Biosis, is this consortium a hero? Well, uh, compared to what they've done, uh, what our healthcare professionals uh, have done, uh, we are just supporters of them. Uh, you know, and again, uh, I'm the head of the T3 Foundation, uh, which, is, uh, which aims to develop, uh, you know, the, build the high-tech infrastructure of Turkey, especially by, uh, doing projects in education, uh, we have Denai up, uh, you know, maker lab type of educational programs all, ar all around Turkey, and we organize a big festival, the biggest aviation festival in the world. Last last year it was uh, the held the record number of attendees. You know, one million seven hundred fifty thousand people came in uh, to the. It's a it's a technology and an aviation festival. So we have, uh, we have a startup summit there too. We have students, you know, competitions, technology competitions, all across the spectrum uh, from designing rockets to, you know, uh, unmanned taxis. And uh, we are trying to promote the ecosystem that, you know, gives uh, the opportunity to companies like Biosys so that the other products can come. So we, we, are, we are very happy to see another example and we are very happy to support uh, an example, you know, a company that has, you know, f f founded from ground up and has started, uh, you know, was able to develop the technology. Now is, you know, is uh, producing, producing, uh, you know, ventilators that are all across the globe. So that's such, a, uh, such an excitement for us. Do you view Biosys or this consortium, what they've achieved, what they're going to achieve, hopefully, in this upcoming month? Are, are you a hero? Is Biosys a hero? Is this consortium a hero for Turkey? The actual heroes are uh, our uh, health system employees. We are, we are supporting them. Uh, without our uh, health system employees, our efforts is useless. Uh, actually, uh, they are real heroes. Thank you for your time. I mean, when I look at what both your companies are doing and what they're a part of. I think it's a very important contribution to the Turkish health sector and who knows, maybe in the future uh, to the international health sector. So thank you for 
putting aside some of your valuable time during this troubling period with the coronavirus. And uh, thanks again.